Welcome back to Inside Card. In this week's owner profile, Chris McClure got to speak with Derek Walker. Derek Walker says that in the early days he met the right people. Then it was how hard do you want to work? In his case, the right people were Swiss engineer Joe Marquardt, who led Walker into CAM and Formula One car design, and Roger Penske. Build his career from design to Formula One chief mechanic to general manager of Penske cars to general manager of Penske racing, during which time they won five PPG Cups, five E500s, and 28 champ car races. But something was missing. Probably didn't realize it um, maybe 20 years ago exactly what I wanted as um, being involved with racing. You have opportunities come along and you see situations and you grow within the sport and it um, became apparent uh, that, you know, having my own team and having a facility like this with uh, the employees that we have was, was a lifelong ambition. It was a lifelong ambition. It just took a while to identify itself. So it, was... um, it was an ambition. I guess I always thought that it um, was out of my reach. I, I never really believed that it was achievable um, until later. Uh, it became like, well, if I do this, I do that, just maybe. And uh, so I didn't think it was going to be uh, that easy at all to do it. In order to do it, Derek Walker figured he needed a partner. I started looking around at teams, and, uh, and it was as much as trying to find an owner who realized what I was trying to do, which was to become part of an organization. So. Al Hogg finally was the guy that really, uh, to me, looked like uh, a genuine person who would willingly share his race team. So that's really what the deal that we made was is that I'd come along, run his race team, and um, earn shares in the race racing organization so I'd have a part of the action as, the, as I grew with the organization. So I really didn't go to Porsche, I went to Al Hogg, but unfortunately I was killed almost before he even started. In spite of Al Holbert's tragic death and the fact Walker knew Porsche planned to leave Card after two years, he remained. Now he could not afford to buy the team, but was given a chance to buy equipment on a six-month note. It was the break he needed in spite of the fact it was often bleak around the shop in those days. I think all those kinds of experiences actually teach you something. They toughen you up. You learn from your mistakes big time when you're trying to do something which is you know, not something to come out of your cradle knowing exactly how to start a race team and how to raise what is 10, 12 million dollars a year. It's, it's a very difficult job, so you can't do that overnight. So I look at all those experiences as real learning curves. They're really tough at the time, but you know, you, you learn from that and you go on or you, you, you don't make it. And if you don't make it, you probably deserve to be there in the first place. While he played marionette with his fortune and his dream, Derek Walker insists he never feared failure. It is, after all, a sport of risk and challenge at every level. For him these days, there is a new level. My challenge is about building a business, so um, hanging around doing the racing bit all the time isn't going to get it done. The challenge is, is building a business, is, is trying to find corporate America, you know, getting them involved in motorsports, and it's one of those best kept secrets. You know, we, we have a, a tough job trying to get in front of people to explain what our business is about and, and improve our business and uh, I think also in my position it gives me an opportunity to be involved in the court and the cart organization as a as a board member and I'm on different committees so, so I find it very interesting to, to learn you know from, from those experiences. In addition Walker has helped iTech become a major tool in modern racing. I enjoy it I mean it, it's very interesting to see how, how efficient we've become in racing when you, when you look back over the years. Uh, and this technology has a place. I think the, the trick for, for art racing is to find the right balance, the right amount of technology, the way to be able to show it and, and, and make the fans a bit, you know, understand what it is that's going on. And uh, the, the cost, you know, how much it costs and how much at the end of the day does it really entertain the fans and how important is it to our bottom line. As for Walker Racing, last year in the first year of a three-year one-car program, new driver Gilles DeFerrin took Walker's number five to the finish in all one race, scored seven podiums, a pair of holes, and wound up second in the points. We would have been there as many as a three-car team at one time, and um, that puts a lot of pressure on you to find 
that much income to be able to run a successful free car program. And after a while, I realized the best thing I can do is to really throttle it back and build the organization and grow a little bit slower and focus on uh, less rather than more and do less better.